We are less than two weeks away from the Iowa caucuses. On January 15th, the first voters in the country will get their say in who will represent the Republican Party in the 2024 presidential election. As of today, former President Trump is expected to win that contest. South Dakota Republican Governor Kristi Noem joins us now from Sioux City, Iowa. Governor, good to see you. Let me ask you this. Is there any scenario that you see where former President Trump is not the Republican nominee in 2024? I don't. Uh, we desperately need Donald Trump back in the White House. And Iowa is overwhelmingly in favor of sending him there. It's going to be exciting to see what happens here in just a little over 10 days, how people start to send a message to the rest of the world that we are going to start fixing what's broken in America and make sure that we're putting America first again. Not numerically, but practically, do you imagine this fight for the Republican nomination will be over after the South Carolina primary? I do. I think that a lot of this is uh, a refining process that is already moving along faster than it did the last presidential cycle. So, you know, this is what we do. This is how um, politics and government works in America. But definitely, I think we're just a few short weeks away from having our Republican nominee. It will be Donald J. Trump, and he will be the next president of the United States. I'm excited about that, Major, because every single day as governor, when Donald J. Trump was in the White House and he was president of the United States, I got to be on offense. I got to fight for my people, bring forward solutions to the problems that they are facing. Since Joe Biden's been in the White House, all I do is try to defend my people, protect their freedoms, try to keep the federal government out of their pockets and off their backs. Uh, so we need a change. And boy, these people in Iowa, they are feeling the pain of Joe Biden and his policies. How would you assess Ron DeSantis and Mickey Haley's campaigns thus far, Governor? You know, I think they're fine. Uh, you know, I served in Congress with Ron DeSantis. I know him. He got elected governor when I got elected governor. So, you know, he's certainly been a colleague. We made very different decisions, though. When times got tough and our constitutional rights and freedoms got challenged, he closed his businesses. He closed his beaches. He just made very different decisions than I did and took away people's freedoms. So, you know, I haven't supported him. Uh, I haven't supported Nikki Haley. I just think I don't really know who the real Nikki Haley is. Uh, she's whoever she needs to be for whatever ways the political winds blow that day. So uh, we need a president that is strong, that is willing to take on challenges and has proven themselves to us. And uh, the only person that has done that is President Trump. Did the governor of Iowa, Kim Reynolds, miscalculate endorsing Ron DeSantis, Governor Noem? Oh, we all love Kim Reynolds. Uh, you know, she makes different decisions than I do, too. So I don't know if how that is going. Her people still love her. I've been here, you know, talking to them all day in grocery stores, coffee shops. I got to go to a candy store. I get to go drive tractors in a little bit. You know, I get to do a lot of that stuff quite often. They're very fond of Kim Reynolds, although uh, Ron DeSantis is overwhelmingly not their choice here in Iowa. Are you in uh, Sioux City and doing other things for the Trump campaign to audition for the vice presidential nomination? No, I'm, I'm here to help the president win. Uh, you know, leadership has consequences. If we ever saw the impact of who was in charge, it was over the last several years and how it affected the people that were living in our communities and in our states. So for me, I just want to go to sleep at night knowing I did all I could do to make sure that we had the right leadership overseeing the United States of America. So, uh, you know, I always show up. The people in this country that get work done or, and really make change are people that show up. And so I'm here to talk to my neighbors. Uh, they all know me very, very well. We're just going to have a family conversation tonight about how important this caucus is and how important it is that they send President Trump back to the White House and send a message to the world. But Governor Noem, if offered, you would take the slot, would you not? Oh, I think anybody in this country, if they were offered it, needs to consider it. Uh, everybody has to think about it. Everybody has to do all they can. I'm a grandma now. I've got two grandkids, one more on the way. Uh, what kind of a country do they, are they going to get to grow up in? That's really what every American needs to be asking themselves right now. What do they want America to look like in 20 years? That's why this election matters. You've said recently that Nikki Haley would be a bad choice for former President Trump if he were to become the Republican nominee as vice president. Why is that? Why would that be a bad choice? Well, because, uh, gosh, Nikki Haley would be a bad choice because I don't know what she will say or do next. You know, she 
was opposed to raising gas taxes when she was governor and then facilitated a huge tax increase on gas taxes. She said that she would never run for president against Donald J. Trump, and then she ran against him as president. She, you know, said that China was our friend and we should be doing business with them and inviting more of them to the United States. And then now she says they're her enemy. So I just don't necessarily know um, what she truly believes and who she really is. And if ever there was a time to be confident in who our leader was, that they're a genuine person, that they're showing you exactly who they are, there was no one that I know of that is more honest about who he is and what kind of an individual he is than President Trump. Um, that's what people love about him, is he doesn't think he's better than anybody else. He's one of them. He's fighting for them. He, he embraces who he is, and he just gets up every day and does this uh, work to protect our country. And yet in this primary nominating contest, both Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis have criticized former President Trump for increasing the nation's national debt, for failing to build the wall, and in DeSantis's case, criticizing the president for keeping Dr. Fauci and many COVID restrictions in place while he was president. Your response? I think presidential campaigns are always filled with criticisms, and we've got a laundry list of criticisms for them and their leadership positions as well. There's more work to do. Uh, and there is a, a need for someone who brings forward solutions and takes bold action. I'm thankful for President Trump that when I was in Congress, I got to work with him on tax reform. He let people keep more money in their pockets. He was strong on foreign policy. Gosh, he killed terrorists and he defended our country and stood beside our allies and protected them. Uh, we didn't have situations like we have with Russia, Ukraine, and the Middle East, with Israel, uh, with North Korea when President Trump was in the White House, you know, because he was strong and he clearly let them know where America was. We didn't have this border situation like it is today, unprecedented, um, uh, dangerous individuals being led into our country and no enforcement of law and order. So, you know, there is a laundry list of successes that President Trump brought to our country, and I'd go back to those days and put him back in the White House in a heartbeat compared to what we've got today under Joe Biden. You've spoken, Governor, in your book and elsewhere about how in American politics it sometimes happens that women who are in the arena are diminished or are treated with less respect than men. Considering that, are you comfortable with the former president referring to Nikki Haley as bird brain? I am comfortable with debating policies. I always love to debate people on what they have implemented what they've done, the consequences of those, and pointing those out. And tonight when I'm talking with the folks here in Iowa, I'll be talking about the policies that have been enacted under this administration, under Joe Biden, and the difference of what President Trump did when he was in the White House. We'll talk about what it feels like here with gas prices the way that they are, grocery prices costing what they're like, uh, and how people are just alarmed by what they see in the changes and the demographics in our country because of the open border and how these um, dangerous individuals are being led into our country. So that's that's the main number one issues that people are talking about here. And I think it's important we focus on policies. Do you think there's anything unnecessarily diminishing or demeaning about a term like bird brain? Oh, I think that in this day and age, that if you can focus on true facts, it's always best to do that. Um, you know, we, we've always talked about the fact that President Trump says a lot of things and that we don't have to agree with everything that he says. And we don't have to like everything that he says and we don't have to talk like he does. I love what he did. I love the actions that he takes. I love that he's strong. That's what America needs. South Dakota's Republican governor, Kristi Noem, thanks so much for your time. Thank you, Major. Have a wonderful day.